Youth Ministry Nation. This is my friend Kurt. I'm AC. Talk Youth Ministry. Youth Ministry Nation, how What's up? What's up? What's up? All right, today, dude. Yeah. Let me frame this, even though this is a topic that you have been talking a lot about. Yeah. Here's what we're going to talk about today. Mm-hmm. Based on some questions we've got. Um, by the way, if you have a youth ministry question, you can just email us at let's talk youth, youth ministry, ministry at gmail.com. Yeah. If you send it in via video, we'll video, we'll show the video of the question. You can send us a video of a little word of encouragement, which we have at the end of the show today with our good yep. friend April Diaz from New Song Church. If you want to sponsor a show, you can do that. Just email us. We'll give you all those details. It's only five bucks. Mm-hmm. But one of the questions we've been getting asked off and on, but kind of in a little bit more than usual lately for some reason yeah. is a variety of questions all around this idea of um, what we would call attractional youth ministry. Yeah. Um, what is attractional youth ministry? Hey, why, why do you guys use an attractional youth ministry approach? Yeah. Hey, the church down the street, or I read this article. And so there's just this, a lot of kind of questioning and talking about this idea of attractional youth ministry. So what we thought we would do today is we're not going to give a whole lot of answers. We're just going to yeah. talk about our thinking and our what goes on in our head when we hear the when we hear the term attractional youth ministry, yeah. and just give people watching just maybe a little bit of food for thought. Yeah, because I think it's worth thinking about. It's definitely worth coming to some conclusions about. But and we have, and we'll be happy to yeah. share what those are. But mostly we're just going to kind of dance around the topic without solving. The issue or the question. And I would say if you see something on the show that we say today and you're like, oh, I would love to hear more on that, right? Uh, just email us and we can do some follow up. Yeah. Okay, so, first question, AC. Yeah. When you hear the phrase attractional youth ministry, how would you, to the best of your ability, give yeah. us sort of the, the, the most traditional, most widely held sort of definition of what people are talking about when they hear the yeah. phrase attractional youth ministry? Well, I think when you hear attractional youth ministry, um, relevance is a huge issue. You know, kind of like how relevant should I be? Should I allow certain stuff to go on in the in the service? Should I use all the bells and whistles that are kind of like afforded to us um, from what students are already into and what they're already hearing, like secular music, right. or should I use that type of stuff to attract students? Okay, um, so attractional youth ministry, is, as you would say, how it's defined is, in essence, kind of doing whatever you need to do, yeah. using whatever tools, whatever tricks, whatever yeah. whatever you can do to attract Going kids out, to your to youth attract. group. Yeah. And most of the time, it seems that that is spoken of in more of a negative light. Yeah. Like when people use the term, oh, that's an attractional ministry, yeah. or you're just doing attractional youth ministry. You're not making disciples. It's considered very You're negative. Just showing people. Yeah. yeah so so speak, speak to that for a yeah. little bit. Um, well, I would say we're, we definitely think attractional in the sense of um, purpose. And that has to do a lot with what is, what is our main purpose, what's our goal for what we are doing. Um, I never think um, attractional or relevance in the sense of, hey, I need to be. I need to have the hottest mu- music popping because that's what's going to draw students to the ministry. Um, or even like in a, in a situation where I'm kind of glorifying what the world is kind of doing. I think of, of relevance as, hey, I need to be current on what students are going through. I need to be current on um, how our students communicate. I need to be really relevant in, in really the language that they're using, um, not so that I can speak and sound cool, right. or, but for the simple fact that that's their world. It's like right. I have to kind of like be in their world. So even knowing the music, I mean, a lot of people would say, well, you don't have to know the songs. You don't have to know it. And, it, and I definitely think you don't have to know all that. I would say if you want to be more in tune right. with the overall uh, life, the overall like – but uh, most- of your students, you kind of want to know what's going right. on out there. But most people probably wouldn't say, knowing what music is popular, and knowing what movies are popular, or whatever, knowing that um, 
the Divergent book series was almost as popular as yeah. Hunger Game. Like that kind of relevance, most people wouldn't say that's on the same. They most people wouldn't argue that we should be somewhat relevant. Yeah. But so so they take so attractional youth ministry seems to be almost viewed as this next level up where because I think you could have a a very missional youth ministry yeah. that is still extremely relevant. Yeah. And the youth leaders still can have those kind of kind of real world conversations with their kids. Yeah. That's just good youth ministry, yeah. right? And not too many people are gonna argue that. What people argue is that this idea of attractional ministry. Because it's always used mostly in a derogatory phrase, where yeah. oh, you're just an attractional youth ministry, you just do whatever it takes, get them in, and and yeah, and the problem I've seen is that the assumption is that anybody that has an attractional youth ministry model, which I don't even know how many people have an attract, they wouldn't they wouldn't define themselves as, as, as an attractional youth ministry model, because that would imply, and a lot of the people critical yeah. of you know, a lot of mega churches and big outreach oriented yeah. things is they would say, well, it's it's they all they do is that attractional stuff. They might not say that, but that's the assumption. It's as if yeah. it's attractional only. Yeah. And if there is a ministry out there, a youth ministry in a church that's yeah. doing attractional only, only. Yeah. then I would probably agree that's probably not a very healthy youth ministry. Model. Yeah. No. Totally. Right? All you're doing is totally. big fun games and pizza parties and lights, camera action. Totally. If that's only what you're doing, yeah. which is what most people. Think of when they think of attractional. attractional youth ministry. Yeah, I've never met anybody that is doing attractional only. Yeah, we're we have an aspect of attractional youth ministry in our youth ministry. Yeah, but it's not attractional only. So I think if you can be attractional, and yeah, then you can build. You know, so attractional to me, um, I almost would say we need to reclaim the phrase. We either need to get rid of the phrase attractional youth ministry because it's viewed as such a negative. negative. Or we need to reclaim it and say, no, 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 we're not gonna let we're not gonna let people say just because you do a big event once a month or you have bought free pizza for first time visitors, yeah. that that means you're an attractional Absolutely. youth ministry that is shallow and superficial and not giving kids what they want. Because people will say, and we talked about this before, yeah. before we started filming, well people say, Isn't Jesus enough? Yeah. Like, isn't Jesus enough? Well, yes, yeah. he is totally enough. Yeah. But no, he's not enough, yeah. right? To the unchurched kid, they don't know they need Jesus. Yeah. <laughs> they don't know that they have a God-shaped hole in their heart. Yeah. And so the only way you can begin to tell them that sometimes is to attract them to the idea of church through other means. Yeah. And I'm not sure why that's become so bad, but, but yeah. it kind of has. The other day we're coming home surfing. Just yesterday we're coming yeah. home surfing. And we get behind a car, and it says, powered by Jesus. Bumper sticker, powered by Jesus. And my buddy goes, hey, man. I wonder what kind of gas mileage that car must get if it's right. powered by Jesus. Well, the, the joke is, obviously, that car isn't powered by, Jesus. it needs more than, yeah. Je Jesus isn't enough. Is it powered by Jesus? Yeah. But it also needs gasoline. Yeah. It needs some other things. So the idea of, isn't Jesus enough for your youth group? Yeah. Jesus is enough for your youth group. Totally. And the message of Jesus and the mission of Jesus. But other things help propel that message. Other yeah. things help that message become something that non-church kids are quote unquote attracted to yeah. at the beginning. I think that's what that's why purpose is so important. Because I right. feel like, man, attractional having that attractional piece, which I would probably say every church, even if you didn't think you do, if we right. looked at the structure, there is an element of attraction, which I think is totally fine. I think you're right in terms of thinking of that in a different form and really reclaiming that and saying, wait a minute, it's not it's not a bad thing when it's purposeful. It's not a bad right. thing when there is an actual There's a reason biblical why. basis for what you are doing. Right. But other than that, I mean right. apart from that, then that's that's probably the bad taste that that it has been yeah. left in some people's mouths right. because they have Kind of like either well, and we're, I things. think we're honestly, and it, this isn't a bad thing. We're looking for a scapegoat. Yeah. If if faith abandonment, if teenage dropout drop off rate amongst Christian graduates is as big as people say it is, which by the way we can debate that. Yeah. If you go to Ed Stetzer's blog, um, I'm not even sure what it is, EdStetzer.com or whatever, but Ed Stetzer actually recently wrote a pretty good article, yeah. kind of even debunking some yeah. of the research 
and it scared us into thinking teenagers are jumping, like off, jumping the, ship. off the ship. But even if they are, we're looking for a scapegoat. Well, why is that? And it's way easier to say, well, we've just been doing attractional shallow youth ministry, which could be part of the problem, yeah. than it is to say, hey, we've been teaching kids proper theology. There's other factors involved in faith abandonment other than the church. I mean, there's so much yeah. that could go into a kid leaving faith to blame it all on, well, you know, when you do a big Friday event, you tell your friends if they bring a friend, they get free pizza. That's what's ruining the youth group. I just, to me, it's a straw, it's not a straw man. What's the difference between a straw man and a red herring? I don't know. I don't know. It's a little bit of both. It's just an unfair, it's an unfair scapegoat. Um, and people will say, you have to be attractional or missional. Like, missional is the opposite of attractional, yeah. right? Attractional is do whatever you can to get them in here. Missional is, no, you take the kids you have and you send them out in the world, yeah. and they will lift up the name of Jesus, and kids will come in that way. Yeah. Um, I'm not sure why those two have to be um, opposite. Totally. Why, why can't they get along? <laughs> why can't you be attractional to attract kids to your ministry? And then once you have them, it's a, it's a sending game. Where you say, now that you're part of this family, go and be missional. Yeah. And go and, and so you're, it, it, it's it a little bit of It needs to be that animal. Especially if you're dealing, if you're in an area where there is a heavily population of students who don't know Christ and their parents aren't following Christ. Right. Our area, we have a huge area. We, I mean, we have five large schools where a lot of the student parents don't go to Christ, but a lot of our, I mean, don't know Christ. But a lot of our students are in those schools, right? And so they're 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 pretty much witnessing and being an example to the students. And we've had countless and countless of um, testimonies about students who right. have uh, brought their friends to Christ, and yeah. then their friend has brought their parents right. to Christ, right. and then it's like a ripple effect yeah. because because the door was made right. open because there was some. Um, some type of bridge yep. built between well, those students. And, and the I church. think like our youth group, if we're just using ours as an example, because we get we get hit on a lot for being attractional. Yeah. You know, we take hits all the time. But if you look below the surface, I mean our student ministries is totally missional too. Yeah. I mean our primary means of evangelism is encouraging and equipping our own teenagers to go be salt and light in yeah. the world. In the church, and we do yeah. a few attractional things and our weekend entry level is very attractional. Yeah. In some ways, I almost see it as a numbers game. And I might be stretching it, and it's okay if people watch and go, okay, that's a stretch. But I look at Jesus' model, and I go, Jesus was certainly missional, right? I mean, yeah. he, he <laughs> he's the epitome of missional ministry. But he was also attractional. I mean, Jesus did miracles for a couple reasons, right? Partly out of compassion. That wasn't the only reason Jesus did miracles. Jesus also did miracles to attract people. Yeah. It, it was to to create a crowd, to create excitement, to create a conversation so that, you know, man, he comes wandering through town and there's already this reputation. Yeah. You know, Jesus preached to thousands and thousands of people about just sort of everyday stuff. Hey, blessed yeah. are you, blessed are you if you're if you're meek. Yeah. Hey, blessed are you if you're poor in spirit. I mean, he's talking to stuff that's attractive and different so that Yeah. It's a numbers He's game. Debunking of, everything yeah, that they. But of those five thousand people, them, yeah. some of them kind of filtered through and became his missional agents into the world. Yeah. But it's a it's kind of a numbers game. Oh, totally. So I don't apologize for being attractional. Totally. I want to attract a ton of kids at exactly. certain events. It's part of our purpose. Yeah. I want to be able to defend. Why do you do pizza parties? Because we want to attract a ton of kids yeah. here so that we have because if it's all about sending a hundred students to be missional Christ followers, the best way that I know to get a hundred students to be missional is to get more than a hundred at an attractional and, uh, initial event yeah. so that I can filter through. It's kind of a yeah. a numbers game. Yeah. And it seems like Jesus played the numbers game. Yeah. I'm gonna preach to thousands so that when I wander away, some of these these thousands want to wander away with yeah. me. So that I can pour into them a little bit more no, and send totally. out into the world. I, Stretch, maybe. Sorry, I'm really no. Wrong. I I totally think that 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 plays a huge part into it. I remember I just got to speak at a um, Christian club in a school, and I talked about uh, the, the the guy who had many demons, right? 
and he wanted to come with Jesus at the end. And Jesus said, no, go back, tell everybody what I just did. Right. And it was almost like, I mean, at that time, no one, no one was casting Jesus out. They all knew this guy as a guy who they had to put, who slept in the, the right. grave area, right. and yep. they tried to bind him, and right. he couldn't bind him. So I'm sure when he came running back to the city, everybody started running away or whatever. But number countless of, of, of interactions where Jesus would tell them, go, go spread the word of what just right. happened to you. And so that they may believe, so that yeah. they may, you yeah. know, want the same. Uh, right. Yeah. Oop, oop. That's what happened on this one. Um, but yeah, so I, I mean, I think purpose is a huge thing. Right. Yeah, if, I, you're, only, if you're only doing big attractional events for the sake of it, yeah. just for the heck of it, yeah. then I think we're subject to criticism, and that's fair totally. criticism. Only. But if you've got a strategy behind it, so if okay. you're attractional only, which again I've not I've not met anybody that is, but yeah. you know people are making those assumptions, bloggers and stuff make those assumptions. Right. So if you're attractional only, then yeah, you're probably you're probably worthy of some criticism. Yeah. However, if you're attractional and yeah. and you have a strategy and a purpose, yeah. and this is why we do that. Because it helps us move kids to here, which helps us move kids here, yeah. which helps us go and be missional into the world. Yeah. I have a hard time seeing any problem at all with an attractional aspect to reason. Yeah. You shouldn't be attractional driven or whatever, but you should be. You shouldn't be afraid to utilize attractional aspects as part of your of your ministry strategy. Totally. Um, and again, I think. Well, I. I say, and again, I haven't said this yet, but I, I was thinking about this earlier. Is here's my thing: is I, I just think whatever's working, you yeah. know, like whatever's working for you. It, it slash, if you're just trying, you know, yeah. are you trying to reach kids for Jesus? Are you having some measure of success? If you're having zero success, well, maybe you're doing too much attractional stuff. If you're having zero success, may it might be possible that you're so missional that you're not attracting any new kids because yeah. you're putting all of your eggs in this missional basket yeah. and the kids who you're trusting to be missional aren't being missional. Yeah. So, you know, if you're Or having, you're not teaching the Or you're not teaching the evangelism the, piece. Yeah. Or there's some kind of like in in all of the purpose, there are other there are areas that you're falling short right. on. Right. So like the purpose of evangelism, maybe that's being taken over because you're so discipleship heavy right. Right. that you forget about that piece of yeah. hey students should not just be, you know, trying to live, live, live for Christ. They need to be right. sharing their faith. They need right. to be sharing what God is doing in their life with their friends. Yeah. Well, and that goes back to, I mean, our old, but still completely, we are committed to it. It's our whole purpose-driven paradigm yeah. of balancing all five purposes. And yeah. a purpose is evangelism. We just choose to do evangelism a little bit attractional and a little bit missional, yeah. right? But we've also got worship and discipleship ministry going on and we try to balance those things so that we feel like um a we've got something kind of for every type of student that might come through our doors but also we go you know what we've not put our eggs all in one One basket basket. we're we're trying to have a balanced approach to ministry and it's yielding some success right um but man if if you're putting all your eggs in attractional ministry that's a mistake if you're putting all your eggs in missional, then that's 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 a mistake. You yeah. know, you, you want to kind of spread that out and have lots of hooks in the water yeah. and lots of entry points for lots of different kids. Some kids are attracted. You know, missions work is now an evangelistic tool, right? Yeah. Some we just did a missions trip. We just trip. did one. I we just... took non-believing kids on that missions <clears throat> trip because yeah. they're attracted to serving. Yeah, and I mean, schools are built. On it seems like more students are becoming more humanitarian, yep. aware yep. in terms of like wanting to serve other people, and so like we just I just went on a mission trip, a local peace trip that we did, and a lot of the students in my group who are believers, but they all were coming from all different roads and all different yeah. paths. Man, that was a huge thing for them to go through and meet God in that way. And now they've been back to school and have already right. told friends about it. Right. And they got friends coming to church this weekend. And yeah. it just. And 
another hook in the water. And that, that doesn't fit the typical <laughs> definition of attractional ministry. It does. But it was super attractive to those mom totally. baby kids, right? I mean, totally. so um, bottom line, if you're having some fun, you're reaching kids, you know, maybe some of these crazy camps that we throw ourselves in. Are you attractional? Are you missional? Are you purpose yeah. driven? Are you organic? Are you Maybe some You're of those camps that. we need to just kind of go, what, whatever, man. <laughs> We've built just, way too yeah, many silos yeah, for us to try Way to, too many categories. Too many. Too just, many. Just do good ministry that is in some way attractional to teenagers yeah. that points them to Jesus. And you've got a reason and a strategy yeah. behind why you do what you do. Yeah. And I think you're doing an okay job. I think the, the question I just wrote down, why use the world's ways and Jesus is enough, is just the wrong question. It's like an argument for the sake of an argument because it's one you can never win, never explain. Right. Because of course Jesus is mm-hmm. enough for everything. Totally. But and Jesus used the world's way and, at the yeah, time, he, right? I mean, I mean he used he tools used parables. Of the it doesn't right. mean that you now it's it's you. So I mean, use your own mind, use your own context of ministry, your own context. I mean, you are a ministry within a ministry, so use your own context for how much you do or for what you do. But in terms of the, you know, sometimes we have to break the, the bonds of traditionalism yeah. a little bit to understand that, okay, is it bad or is it sinful? Right. And, and kind of I know that's going way, way into an, another realm, but I think sometimes we're so kind of like bent on pleasing. You know, traditionalism has a real strong element to pleasing people. Versus actually completing the mission that God has given you to do. Yeah. It doesn't mean that you go and you know break covenant or you go do some wild and crazy yeah. stuff. But it does mean that you have to think outside of the traditional box in order to reach the students that are so in your area. I agree. Let's do this. We're rambling, me and you both, around and around, which is good. Yeah. And we purposely didn't try to like give too many solutions because this idea of attractional ministry is an ongoing conversation. Yeah. It's a little bit confusing. It's... I think it's got words that are defined wrong. It's got motives wrongly attached to people. Yeah. Um, but I think it would be worth, if you have an attractional youth ministry question or just a question about like ministry philosophy and yeah. purpose and how do you decide, um, send that to us. Yeah. Send us any of those questions at letstalkyouthministry.com. Let's talk about that next Let, week. Let's, let's talk youthministry.com. And if we get enough traction on this, yeah. um, we'll continue the conversation. Yeah. Um, today... We just wanted to kind of ramble about it and, 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 and throw out a few thoughts just because people will act as if the issue is settled. Yeah. Mi- attractional is out. Missional is in. Attractional is bad. This is good. Yeah. And I just want us to go, well, wait a second. Says who? Yeah. Says who? And why? Yeah. And what are, what, what are the terms? We even, are, do we even agree with the definition? Yeah. Right? <laughs> so let's at least throw that out there. Talk amongst yourselves. Yeah. Email us. We'd love to talk more about it or not. Here is an encouraging word to you, the Youth Ministry Nation, from our good friend, April Diaz. See you guys. Hey, Youth Workers. It's April Diaz. And I was so excited when Kurt asked if I could do a little video for you guys. And I just wanted to encourage you in the kind of tail end of this ministry season um, to take care of yourself. Uh, One of my most, I don't know, encouraging and challenging scriptures in the New Testament is when Jesus says, Uh, What is the benefit if you gain the whole world and you lose your soul? And so in this last stretch of the ministry season, um, please do not forfeit your soul. Um, I pray that God would encourage you and fill you and give you hope and life and energy and passion. um, And that if you need to, you would get away to quiet places to hear from God. um, Because it is not worth uh, the forfeiting of your soul in some sort of measure to gain the whole world. So thanks for all that you do. You are amazing. And this generation of students is forever different because of you. Have a great day.